Today we're going to make some rustic cottage spring and summer DIYs. I'm Brandy. This is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first project, we're going to make an adorable bunny wreath. We're going to need some pipe cleaners, a sign of your choice from Dollar Tree. I love this one, very rustic. A wire wreath form, and this is the bigger form. And I've got just a bunch of carrots that I got at the thrift store, but you can use the carrots that you buy at Dollar Tree. It's totally fine, whatever you have. I have some burlap ribbon, and then I have another variety of burlap and linen ribbons, some mesh ribbon, and then just to give you an idea of other types of patterns that you could use with your wreath. We're going to start off by laying out the frame here and I'm showing you with this green. We're going to add, you'll see me doing this on the crossbars here. We're going to do a green one on the inside loop and a green one on the outside loop of each one of these. Now I started off with a different pattern when I used the orange on another wreath. So just avoid that. Just don't pay attention to that one. When you see it, we're going to skip back over to it. You just do your wreath just like this because this is the pattern we end up using. So over the crossbar, on the bottom ring, and in the top ring. Right in those centers. Just give it a few twists and use a full length pipe cleaner here. Then you want to go all the way around back to the top. You can kind of do the math on that and see how many you'll need. All right, so we're going to grab that roll kind of pleat it, pinch it, make sure this, that the edges are kind of on the outside. It's not wired, so it's just uh, kind of got a seam on it there, makes it nice and neat. And like I said, we're going to just pretend like this is on the outside. Okay, we're pretending like this is on the outside. And then we're going to go down 10 inches, make a little poof, and then we will use the tie and put that down. So what you're going to be doing is, since you'll have two on each rung, remember how we did that, you're going to go from inside, outside, inside, outside. So if we started off on the inside, the next would be the outside, the next poof would go to the inside, the next poof would go to the outside. You see what I'm saying here? That's how we're going to be doing this all the way around. So we were on the outside, now we're back on the inside. We're going to make a 10 inch poof and we're going to go back to the outside. And when we put the next layer on, we'll do just the opposite. So this ribbon will be kind of crisscrossed over on itself. If you don't have this, it's fine to use whatever type of um, wide ribbon that you have. Maybe you could use that. Never tried to just use a big wide ribbon that didn't have a lot of body like the burlap does. Um, but you could try it, certainly, and you can use any type of uh, deco mesh if you wanted to use deco mesh instead. I'm not the biggest fan of deco mesh. I don't mind using it occasionally, but I prefer the burlap just because I prefer, you know, a rustic or a country type cottagey look. So now we went all the way back to where we started and we're gonna go to the inside. Just going to go back and forth now. So we're on the inside, we're gonna give that a few tight twists and then we'll measure 10 inches and we'll go to the outside. And this is the process that you want to use all the way around till you get back to the beginning. Y'all just supposed to storm today. Today is actually the 16th and we're supposed to have some terrible weather in about 15 minutes. So hopefully I can get this video finished for you guys and run down to get some good and fast high speed internet at the library and then be back home in the safety of my house where I have a storm basement should I need it. Okay, so we went all the way back around and trimmed it off. Now we're going to make some ribbon stacks because you know this is just my preferred method for these wreaths. And since I've done them several times, I figured this would be an easy wreath for you to follow. You've seen me do these before. I'm going to use a striped on the bottom, a solid one, and then that little mesh. And I actually use the white mesh rather than the green. I just like the combination of this a little bit better. 
trying to keep it, you know, keep it as neutral as possible, but still giving it that pop of spring and Easter color. So now for this wreath, when we put down these ribbon stacks, you're going to put it right in the center and take the two ends on the outside and the two ends on the inside. Just bring all those pipe cleaners to the middle and you're going to cross two over two. Very easy and you'll see me do it again. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Then I'm going to take the two from the left and the two from the right and twist them together. Just going to pull them down tight so they kind of squish down in there. And there you go. Easy enough, right? This is easy. Y'all can do this. Y'all can definitely do this. And wouldn't this be cute for if you did it for like St. Patrick's Day and you did, instead of using orange, you just used uh, maybe some gold and some green and some white. Heck, I think the in the Irish flag, green, white, and orange. So actually maybe this wreath base could be used if you wanted to put your St. Patrick's Day goodies on it. Let me know in the comments if you know if that is the colors in that um, the Irish flag, because I think it is. It may be yellow and green. It may be yellow and green, I'm not sure. But I'm just going to speed this up and show you. Now, I cut, think I cut these at 10 inches, and then I dovetailed all of them. And the only ribbon that has wire in it on these stacks is that green ribbon. And I got that 90% off after fall at Hobby Lobby. So, yeah, I was very happy to find that ribbon. Okay, I'm going to continue all the way around. I hope y'all are staying safe, uh, and I hope that you up north, that you guys are not freezing in the cold weather. I've, I've heard so much about snow and, and people being cold, and I know that some places are getting cold weather they're not even used to having, so that's just... Oh, I just, I don't, I can't imagine. I'm glad I have a fireplace, but I don't have to use it very many days where we live. You know, down in South Alabama, you don't really need fireplace necessarily. But I think they're beautiful and I love to hear the sounds and watch the fire. I'm an Aries, so I love the fire. All right, so now when you get all the way back around, go ahead and fluff that all out. You can pull your burlap underneath and then fluff your little ribbons and you can kind of manipulate them and get them around there. See how pretty that cream and burlap colored linen ribbon is underneath? I love that. I've done it on a, used it on a few projects and it really just is so neutral it goes with anything. Very farmhouse pop to it. So this is what the base is going to look like. And we're going to take a bunch of carrots. I'm going to tie those together. I'm just taking three and I've kind of staggered them in the layers so that they look you know they look nice and they're they're going to have the lowest profile as possible instead of all sticking up when i glue them down so the one underneath is a little bit lower down and the two on top um are kind of layered on top a little bit we'll tie this little bunch of carrots like we've been to the farmer's market go back in there and cut off these pipe cleaners anything you have left cut it off don't cut all the way into where you twisted it or it will fall apart. So just leave a little nub there and just push it down. And if you would like to, you can take those pipe cleaners and push them down into the wreath base, base <laughs> if you would like to. Whichever way is easiest for you is fine. And some people don't have clippers, and so that's fine too. By the way, a lot of people ask about these wire cutters. I don't have the exact same ones in my Amazon store, but I have something similar if you want to check them out. So we took the hanger and the tags off the sign, we got it flipped over, and now we're going to put in the pipe cleaner so that they will kind of reach through the wreath so that we can secure it down. So I'm going to use some glue here and then a little scrap of paper over the top. Give that a chance to cool down and dry. I'm just going to use a clamp to hold it for me so I don't have to sit there with my hand on it. Anything we can do to save time is wonderful clamps help me so much okay now we got the other one clamp it once it's all cooled off pop your clamps off bend your wires like this and then when you flip them over you can just kind of feed those little pipe cleaners right through the wreath space base and then right onto the wire because you don't want to attach it where it's just 
stuck down to a piece of ribbon. You really want it on that wire frame so that it doesn't go anywhere. It won't shift and won't go anywhere. And since we didn't hot glue this sign down, you can move the sign off, use it for something else, and you can just use the wreath, wreath base. Why am I having a trouble saying that today? Wreath base. Okay. You can use that by itself without the sign. And I love that idea. You can just swap things around. I love it. And there's my beautiful little cotton patch little sign in the middle of there and I think it looks perfect. So now we got to add our carrots up there, right? And I love that there are carrots in the picture and now we're putting carrots on the outside of this wreath and I think it looks darling and cottagey. I just love this. I hope y'all will try to do something like this. I know these carrots are very nice carrots. I got them at you know at the thrift store unfortunately I'm not sure where you can get the exact same thing but use what you got and we don't have to do a big bow or anything this is perfect just as it is but by all means put a bow on there if that's what you like my videos can be seen on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 central standard time the next is going to be a carrot bundle so if you like tear trays or you just like a little extra something here and there in your house to give the idea of a holiday, I'll show you what you can do. This was my inspiration, this beautiful ribbon that I got at the thrift store. I got, I think, three different rolls with a different design, but they're all kind of a garden design that I'll be using. Love. We'll start with this one. I got some tags and a acrylic pen and then a little piece of leftover wire there. Or pipe cleaner so these are on a wire the greenery so I'm just gonna kind of um, pull them apart and kind of fluff them a little bit make them look good or to what I think looks nice you can do yours however you want and if you don't have greenery you can just add some to your carrot tops if you wanted to but you got to have something on those carrots to hold them together right so wrapping something around the greenery up top really gives me the ability to do this. You can always take your little carrots if you don't have greenery and just glue the carrots together and have a little stack of your own. So you know when you go to the farmer's markets you see maybe some bags of onions, maybe bags of potatoes, lots of things are singular and you just kind of pick what you want and put it in a bag. In my mind the carrots would be in bunches because whoever buys just one carrot, right? So they would be in bunches and I thought you know what? We're gonna make a bunch. This is gonna work. I'm cutting off a length of this beautiful ribbon, no wire, and it's sort of a papery fabric-y. It's the stuff that they were made out of a good while back. I don't know how to explain it, but it's sturdy. It'll stay where you put it. If you make the bow small enough, it won't get floppy at all. And I've worked with this kind of ribbon before, and I like it. I don't mind at all. No wire to have to cut through and it still holds the shape of the bow, and I love that. Rather than using jute, I just decided to use some of this thin black ribbon that I had and use it to tie in the middle of the bow. Kind of makes it disappear and it blends in nicely. I wish that Dollar Tree had something like this that you guys could get. And I'm trying to think, maybe something in a black and white check or gingham I think there's orange and white gingham rolls there too, but it's a thinner, thinner ribbon. I think that would be cute too. So I'm just going to take that little tag there and I'm going to write 25 cents. When I started off, I wrote it small and I did not like the fact that it was so tiny. So I'm just going to flip it over. Thank goodness for two sides, right? And make it bigger. Now that's going to suit what we got. I'm just making a hole here with a little awl that I have, but you do not have to use that. If you've got a hole punch, just go ahead and use that. But some people don't have those, so this works for me. And push that through that hole so that we can tie it down to the ribbon because we didn't trim it off the back, so we have the ability to tie it on there. And then using that same black thin ribbon, we're gonna flip it over and tie it right over where we put our pipe cleaner and then we can trim that off 
I hope it doesn't bother y'all that I say our and we and us because I like to feel like I'm talking to you, you know, like we're having a conversation. I'm not just recording this, like I'm, I'm talking to you, I'm instructing you, I'm helping you, I'm encouraging you. So when I say we, I mean us, right? All my crafty friends. Now look at that. Isn't that simple? That was so quick and easy to do, but that will look so cute on a tear tray or just sitting somewhere in your house. The next project is going to be a wall pocket. We're going to take some greenery, whatever type you like. Some thrifted and some's from Dollar Tree. But you use what you got. I like the cream and the orange. And I have two different sets of orange so I can decide which one I like best. This came from the thrift store, but you can get these type of tag signs from Dollar Tree. This one's about 15 inches. And then I have some fabric that I thrifted and got the name on there for y'all so you can check it out if you can find some for yourself. And then a little piece of foam, which I'm going to trim down because I want this to have a rounder appearance. So since it's as wide as that, I'm going to need to trim it down so I have room on both sides. This is my knife from Dollar Tree for pool noodles. Isn't it great? I love that thing. So now I'm just trying to get an idea of how much I want to have on here and how far I want to pull it up. And I'm just going to tear it. It'll make a nice straight line if you tear it that way. And then I had to get this one going a little bit. So I just nicked it slightly through a few threads and then pull it off. And we'll have nice straight square edges. Next is going to be the hot glue, and this is how we're going to hold this foam to the board while we fool around with that fabric to get it where we want it. I don't want anything slipping around. So I want this little rough edge to be on top, and I want it to be slightly over, so you can see down in there. Slightly over so that we don't see that foam. I'm just trying to kind of measure it out and then fold it over. You can get some clamps to use for this if you need to. I'm going to add some hot glue down and then fold the edge over one at a time. I don't want to stretch it too hard, but just stretch it a little bit. And you see I'm holding it with my wrist on the other side. All right, now for the bottom, I'm going to see how much we need to fold up. And it looks like I have a little too much, so I'll trim a little excess off where that writing and everything was, about an inch off. And then I'm going to fold this sort of like you would if you were wrapping a gift. I'm going to add some hot glue here to help hold it in place while I work on the other side. This is going to give such a clean, nice edge. And then once it's all folded up and glued down, you can cover it up with another piece of fabric or you can use a piece of um, scrap paper or some of that crafting paper on the back if you would like to do that. But now this held it down good for me. So now I can pull that edge up nice and straight and then add my hot glue and press it down. And this will be the bottom of this wall pocket. Now I've made these before. This is nothing that you haven't seen me do before. But I love the idea of that carrot fabric on that orange board. And then the orange and the white and the green together. I think this with the wreath and the little bundle of carrots just makes such a cute little trio to use in your house. Not everybody goes all out and decks out their entire house for a holiday, but if you just want a little bit here and there, these three pieces can be used maybe in your kitchen and front room, you know? And that would be it. That's all you would have to do. Not everybody has a big house either, right? Some of us have apartments, some of us live with other people, and we don't really have the space to monopolize with all of the stuff that we make. And this way, they're fairly small. And you can work with those. I think so. So I put the fern pieces in the back. Those came from the thrift store, but you can certainly get beautiful greenery pieces from Dollar Tree right now. So go ahead and grab whatever you like. If you like ferns or whatever, go ahead and use that. You could even have some ivy trailing over the edge if you wanted to. 
and I'm just going to start adding these in. I'm not going to make this an even bouquet. I'm not going to have this symmetrical all over. This is going to be a little here, a little there. Some will be higher than others. Here's the one that's on a stem that has two. I'm going to place that down in there. Get it in the right spot so that its face isn't all squished. And that's why we fluff too. Once you get your pieces where you want them, fluff them out. See how you like it. And then you can move stuff around if you need to. Add a little bit more here and there. And I chose the orange that's a little the orange that's a little bit softer of a color. It's more of a peachy orange or a lighter color orange. And the other one had some green and orange in it, but it's pretty vibrant. And I I'm gonna save that one for another project, I think. But you see how cute and how easy is this? So easy. Let's add one more right up here on the side. Now, if you like this, you can leave it exactly like this, but I'm going to give you two options on how to sort of top it off. Two options. All right, so I've torn a strip of that same fabric. If you want to use this fabric as a hanger, you can go through the hole in your sign, whatever you get that you're using. Most of them do have a, a little hole in the top or a shape cut out, and you can use it in there. It doesn't matter. This would probably be pretty on the new, I think it's, uh, it's a little end cap that I've seen in my store that's got farmhouse stuff on it. And it's got some rustic looking white um, ship-like paneling, sort of, and that would be really cute too for the background. If you don't want to use that hanger like that, you can just make a bow to go on the top. That's another option, and that's the one that I chose. So I'm just going to make this really simple bow like we did with the other one. Really easy. Now this is cotton fabric, so it's floppy. It's not going to hold a big, big old bow, so I'm just going to put a little, little something in there. And the fact that it's cotton and it's got a rough edge and it's just kind of floppy just gives me some shabby chic feels, and I like that. I think that it's cute with those beautiful little flowers on there. I don't know, it's just a feeling. You know, sometimes you're doing a project and you put something down and you're like, something doesn't feel right about this. It's just not quite how I want it. So then you take it off and you try something else and you're like, yep, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was going for. I think we all do that. You just don't see my entire process because it would take forever and you wouldn't get a 30 minute video. You would be watching me for hours probably. Nobody wants to hear me ramble on for hours. So, you can add your bow wherever you like. I'm going to put mine above the little hole there because that way the hole itself can be the hanger. And I'll just hot glue this in the center. And then the ends could be torn or you could shag them up by pulling some threads out. You could cut them at a slant. You could do a dovetail. But I'm just going to leave them plain. Just like that. A little rough on the edges. I'm going to leave it. And it looks good enough for me. And I think that is... I think it's cute. It's not even even. You see how the edges are not even? I still like it. But there's one more thing we can do here. So I've got this little carrot. I'm going to add carrot right to the top. Now that just brought it all together. And the carrot came from the thrift store, by the way. Our carrot needs some greenery. I tried using some of the waxed greenery that came off the carrots, that the bigger carrots that I used, and it just was not sticking well with the hot glue. I couldn't get it to work for me, so I'm just going to cut down another leaf. So you can do this if you're going to make carrot tops for your little Dollar Tree carrots. And I'm just going to kind of cut notches in it so that it looks like the loose top of a carrot, the little fluffy top of a carrot. And it's dark green, and it matches what's already in the piece. And I'm going to glue it down right to the stem that was poking out of that carrot, and that completes that little bow. I think that's cute. I hope you find pride and happiness in the projects that you do too. Be happy about it. Be proud of it. Show it off. It's your hard work and creativity brought to light. If you've enjoyed parts of this video, I would love a thumbs up and I hope that you have learned something while you have been here for sure. Look at these three together. I think that is adorable. I want you to do these projects. If you do any of these, please feel free to email me. You can find my email, my Amazon store, my PO box. Everything's in the description box for you. 
you can do it. I know you can do it. I've seen pictures where people have made projects based on inspiration that they found on this channel. And I know that you can do it too. Not everything you see is going to inspire you from my channel, but if you do see something you like, I hope that you'll subscribe and stick around because this channel is all about budget friendly and unique DIYs for your home. hope that you all stay safe in this weather, that you go out and find some joy in your day, most certainly. Stay crafty. Call up somebody you love and tell them today that you love them. And thank you so much for stopping by. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.